What language do they speak in Sweden? Here are some results I found. Yiddish, Swedish, Finnish, Northern Sami, Mankili, Southern Sami, Lule Sami, Swedish Sign Language, Pait Sami, Enume Sami. Wow, I wasn't prepared for that. Were you? <laughs> Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the resident redneck, and in the video you're going to see, there won't be any rednecks harmed. Maybe insulted a little bit, not harmed. All right? Now, lately I've been watching videos, and I listen to what guys say. I don't know why, I just, I have this interest in, in accents and language and how people say things. And I come up a while back when people were, were pronouncing M-O-R-S-E as Morris. You know, they had a Morris taper on their lathe or whatever. When really it was Morse, like in Morse code, well, that's when you guys discovered I was a, you know, a grammar Nazi. And uh, I've been listening to another one. People are pronouncing O-R-I-G-I-N as Oregon. It's not. It's origin. O-R-I-G-I-N. And I know where they get this mispronunciation. They're watching Lars Christensen show, show them how to use Fusion 360. I watched him too, you know. And uh, he always says Oregon. But then he grew up speaking one of those languages that Siri listed there. And uh, English is a second language, so you can't hold him to, to saying every word dead on right. Uh, in fact, the only guy I think that probably says everything right is uh, Stefan Gottsvener over in Germany. The guy speaks better English than I do, you know, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, O-R-I-G-I-N is origin. It's not Oregon or Oregon or any of those other ways, okay? Now, last week I made this uh, Tom Lipton chamfering fixture, which I kept calling it a deburring fixture, but by God, it'll deburr stuff too. And uh, anyway, uh, I didn't really finish up everything. I didn't clean the red, you know, die come off of it. And, and I talked to Chuck, Chuck Bomberito. His channel is Outside Screwball. And, you know, Chuck, he's a smart guy, and he says, well, why don't you thread the plate that you're mounting that on instead of clamping it down with a clamp, mount the plate and use a couple of thumb screws to just set it in the right spot every time. And I tried to squirm out of it, but, you know, Chuck was right, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to just do a simple little thing where I'm going to take a thousand grit uh, belt on the belt grinder and clean up the the ugly surfaces of the uh, chamfering tool and we're going to drill holes and thread them and mount this little sucker so that every time I want to put it on there it's in the exact same right spot. Makes sense to me anyway so instead of me gabbing on further and further let's get on with it. Oh there was something else that I had to say I forgot uh, yeah I did I forgot anyway uh, I have noticed from watching all these machinists on, uh, uh, you know, on YouTube that uh, the very best machinists are anal retentive. I mean, it's just a fact. That apparently, it's it's got to be. I was watching Stefan Gutzvener, and not saying I'm not saying he's anal retentive or nothing, but he was making some sort of a thing, uh, flux capacitor or something, and he said, "Well, this has got to be at the very least perfect." And I sat there thinking, well, if at the very least perfect, he must have some measurement that's even better than perfect. That sort of blew my mind, you know. But it's true. I've, I've watched, you know, an old redneck like me, if I'm going to make a widget chopper, I want it square and within a thousandth of an inch of a, you know, the length. Say my specs are plus or minus a thousandth of an inch. And if I make a widget chopper that chops it all square and it's within plus or minus a thousandth of an inch, that's good enough, I'm through. But not these other guys, they're gonna polish it and they're gonna, gonna, you know, buff it and they're gonna, well, you know, do all, all kind of stuff. They're, even surfaces that nobody's ever gonna see are gonna be absolutely, totally shiny perfect, you know? And 
and I can't fault them for that. I mean, that's just I hadn't got that in me. <laughs> but I, I have noticed that characteristic of really the best machinists. All right, let's, we really are going to go into the video now. Well, I guess I'm going to modify this a little bit. I, I was talking to Chuck Bomarito, and uh, he said, well, why don't you just drill some holes in the legs and screw it down at the right distance so that it's repeatable every time. And uh, that, you know, I had been clamping it down, which is why one leg's longer than the other, so I could put a clamp on the, anywhere I wanted on the long one. I thought, well, maybe I should cut them off the same length and, you know, then put the clamp on. And then I thought, no, what if I want to clamp it sometime? So what we'll do is we'll kind of clean up the thing, shine it up a little bit, and, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll set it there at, at what looks like to be a really good distance from the belt and drill some holes to screw it down to the table so that it's exactly repeatable every time. And we'll see how that comes out. I've got a, a 1,000 grit belt on there, so it should uh, should make a nice shiny finish without eating up a lot of metal. All right, let's go crank it up and clean it up. We get the red off. perfect or not that's where it stops it's enough of that well likely it's not that's probably clamped to a point that's above and beyond what's required for the job but I'm going to drill holes in the legs right there and I wanted everything to stay still remember I said a good machinist is a bit anal retentive not that I'm a good machinist but I have watched a lot of them on YouTube all right I marked the both of them here off camera. I forgot to turn the camera on. So I didn't show that, but we did it. Get these all these clamps come off of there. There's a mark and I may have to remark that one on this side again. We'll do that after I clamp this one down. We'll do is we'll just go ahead and drill a nice hole right there for a, a 1024 screw. I'll get everything together. I'm going to try to drill straight down into there. I don't know if it'll really work. I'm not good at handheld drilling or tapping or anything like that. And that's thick metal. We're going to take a break while I do this. All right, we're going to use a little bit of the green goody here. And uh, I find that sometimes makes tapping a little bit easier. It's awfully messy. But then I guess regular oil is too, and we just don't notice it. I wish there was a nice way to turn this thing down slower. There. Yeah, there we go. I guess I might crank it up a little tighter. Yeah. 
Well, it's working. Increase the clutch and tighten this a little. There we are. That one's threaded. So I'll have to get a screw and tighten the thing down and make a hole on the other side. Y'all take a rest. All right. <clears throat> screw a, a number 10, 20 down into that hole. And hopefully I can reach up here with the, with the drill and put something down there. If not, I can always take this off. That might help. Normally I keep a vacuum cleaner hose down here when I'm running this grinder so that I can suck up the dust before it gets everywhere. And I didn't do a thing because you guys can't hear me talking. But I think it could be an extra benefit for you if I did that. You know, it might be nicer. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with uh, trying to drill a hole there. Let's see, I'm going to use the same drill I drilled the hole with to make a little depression in the metal. I think that would be smarter. Now that should uh, roughly a little divot in there. And I can come back with this tap drill and do the same thing as I did here. Which I'm going to do off camera because you've already seen it once, right? Alright, I'm pretty sure that's what Chuck told me to do. And, of course, he told me to use some thumb screws. But I don't have any right now. I can get them down at, uh, at uh, Redneck Supply. Or I, at one time I went to like Smith's to make a little device to make my own thumb screws. So... It's altogether possible that I might do that. Let, let's see if this works. I mean, we got it done. This edge is not canceled. Well, let's come up here. I remember this is a 1,000 grit belt, so it's not really going to be chewing on that really hard. You can already see a shiny edge on there. Yes, I think it's going to do. If you look close, you can, uh, you can see the shiny edge. I'm not going to get a whole lot cut off using a 1,000 grit belt. But if I put a really heavy belt on there, it's going to eat that metal off something off it. Alright, this is a two-thirty grit. It's going to eat a lot more metal. As you can see, the chamfer got wider. I think we're saving that in. So, corrected that. So, I think this will work out just right. That seems to be the exact right distance from your belt. Makes a nice chamfer. Let me do this way. What the heck? It don't cost nothing. Another shiny chance for the edge. This one already did. Another chance for the edge, even though it's got a kind of notch in it there. This side, the remote is not too perfect. Yeah. got dings in it on that side. But there you go, Chuck was right. There you go, Chuck. 
I guess that's why he's managing it, and I'm lazy. Bubba takes Bubba Jr. out on his first fishing trip. They're out there on the lake. Bubba Jr. asked uh, his daddy, says, Daddy says, uh, what makes the boat float? Bubba says, oh, I said, I, mean, I, I really don't know, you know. So they go on a little bit later, and Bubba Jr. says, well, Daddy, how, how can the fish breathe down in that water? Bubba says, well, I, said, I, I really, I don't know. So they, they were fishing along a little while. Bubba Jr. says, hey, Papa, how, what makes the sky blue? And uh, Bubba says, well, he says, I really don't know. And Bubba Jr. says, well, he says, he says, Pop, he says, I hope you don't mind me asking all, you all these questions. Bubba says, no, no. He says, if you don't ask questions, how are you going to learn anything? Well, that's all, folks. Uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.